Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. You are going to be painting along with me and what you need is some water, a paper towel for your brushes, a paint palette, I, I would say small, medium and large brush, whichever one feels good for you, some white, I've got some fluorescent pink which is absolutely lovely, it's actually magenta and this is vermilion which gives us the beautiful tones of orange, red and peach and ultramarine and I'm going to do my best to talk out loud with you and show you my full process. Hopefully you will find value in this. I'm not the most proficient artist out there. I'm probably like you. I'm learning. But I want to share this process with you with the hope that you will also have confidence to get out those paintbrushes and keep learning. So I painted my canvas, which is 20 by 20 centimetres, just to help with the moving of the paint around the canvas. And I'm starting to add a few little tones to just start to paint in that sky, which is my, my very vermilion i can never say that well look at we orange a little bit of the pink and a little bit of the white and we're going to start to block in our sky so this is where you might be a bit scared and thinking well how does this work i think i might have been a bit dramatic there not scared but if you've not if you are not a proficient painter you might be thinking well where do i start um just get paint on canvas the worst that can happen is you are going to paint over if you don't like it so at this stage, we're just wanting to block in our colours. It doesn't have to be picture perfect. We go in for a feeling. Now, I find that for me, as I'm learning, doing the main blocks of colour for the colours I want to see behind, I start with that and then I bring it alive slowly. So it's like a dance I do with a paint. The only thing that I'm concerned at this time is starting perspective so I want the horizon to be quite in the distance because I want the forefront of this painting to be the focal point and starting to understand where some of those tones are going to be so I'm adding a little bit of the blue to this colour and it's given me a very light blue stroke purple and I'm just going to start to blend it in so I'm just trying to keep my brush strokes smooth at this stage I'm not wanting to create texture just a suggestion of where I think some of the colour schemes are going to work because then when I come back and start to layer on it with colour that's when I can build on it and the smoother it is for me the easier it works at this stage. I've now added a little bit more blue to that colour and it's it's obviously, well, you can see it there. There's a little bit of that colour coming in and I've kept it that way purposely to try and smooth out the transition between the sky and where the ocean's going to be. And, and I just work up slowly into the sky, blending it through, trying to get the transition almost like a hazy transition, although I will come through later and give it a more defined uh, feeling and I just keep adding blue to it as I go further down or to get that horizon line just so it becomes more obvious where that skyline is going to be. If you can get your skyline as straight as possible it will help for later but don't stress once your paint's dry you can come in there with masking tape we're, we're going to be doing multiple layers there's going to be clouds to hide our sins um, but it's just a hot tip if you really can't get it straight and sometimes I have to use masking tape and there's no shame in that. While you're going as well, um, if you prefer to have your sides painted, I encourage you to paint your sides as you go in, uh, just so you don't have to then go back and make those tones again at the edge. And aesthetically pleasing it is for me to do those. Originally when I started painting, I never used to do that. As I've progressed, I do. Um, I just think then, no matter where you are looking at your canvas, it looks like it's finished, but it's a personal preference. You may be able to see here, I am slowly working on where that horizon line will be. As I said, if you have it the top third, if you want the focus to be a lot of distance and you're going to do some close up work, um, other than that, the rule of thumb is just over halfway, but it's your painting, it's your fantasy world, you can make it wherever you want. I just wanted to take this time to say, Thank you to each and every person that is a subscriber. Whether you watch uh, five minutes or the full video, it is really helpful. If you find that my art or my video is worth it, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe and share. And hit that notification bell if you would like to see uh, when some of my other paintings are being released, or should I say videos. Now, I am starting to add in a turquoise colour. 
Now that was Amsterdam turquoise colour, just to start to bring a little bit of lightness as my ocean comes towards the front. I've added it into those colours. I love doing that because you bring through some of those tones and it, it brings it all together. And again, that's a personal choice. Again, I'm not going for the final result at this stage because when you are going to be adding more less erosion, each one of these colours that you apply now will still add value to the next layer and you, you get to see some of them coming through. And for me, I find that where some of my work looks a little bit more real, when it's a little bit more rustic and you build it up over layers. Now, the layering is a personal choice as well. Now, your distant colours are normally slightly more muted and darker and as you come to the front, the value of your colour should be more brighter and happier and true and all I'm doing there is now I've got the colour I enjoy slowly adding a bit of white to it as it gets nearer that front as you can see with each one I'm doing I'm adding a bit more white and then I'll continuously go backwards to try and blend it through now when you're working with acrylics depending on the type of acrylics or how you've applied it you might not be able to blend it uh, as freely so a little tip there is just have a little bit of water on your brush not too much otherwise it can break down your paint but it'll more or less wash it off but if you just add enough it'll help it to bleed through and some acrylic paints are wetter than others oh i'm getting a little croak in my throat i must have a little drink that's better <laughs> all i'm doing is repeating the process adding a little bit more white to the turquoise until it's a very very light color i just love working on ocean pieces and i I hope that you're enjoying seeing this series of brushwork that I'm doing and it's the first actual real time one I've done with you other than when I've done my lives. So hopefully if you are painting along this is adding value. I hope it's not too boring for the people that are not painting along but they are well you are enjoying hearing me talk out loud about what I'm doing and why. If I have inspired you in any way, shape or form with art, whether it's just to get you to pick up your paints together, whether it is that you're painting along with me, let me know. I get so much joy from hearing if I have helped inspire somebody or if you have created one of my work, uh, one of my work, <laughs> created something after watching one of my videos, tag me in it and let me uh, have a little look at it because I love to see what you've created. And also I do have a Facebook group. Uh, there's a link in my description. So if you want the opportunity to showcase your work and what you've created, uh, uh, pop over there. It's a really great supportive community where they share their own work, also experience, also uh, answer any questions of yours. So it's just a great work to uh, support each other because I think there's more than enough platform for us all to support each other in whatever creative process we have. Anyway, I'm Sharon and I really did digress there. I'm starting to think about where I want my potential shoreline to come now. I do evolve it as the painting goes on and I think that's the beauty of art, uh, that dance that you do with where it's going to be. Anyway, we are going to start to mix up the sand colour. Now I like to use my purple and the, should I say the warm yellow, <laughs> I can't even speak. And to start with it'll be a little bit darker, you get it until you like the tone that you want and then you just add that little bit of white to lighten it up. Now there's a real balance because you don't want it to look too purple but you don't want it to look too yellow. But I would say if it's dark to start with it doesn't matter. Again, we're going to build it up and we're going to get it light uh, as we get our top layers. But I think the thing you should always take into consideration is if sand's wet, it's slightly darker. So I usually start darker as it hits my short line and then I will bring it lighter as it gets towards the edge. And to start with the colour, you might think, hmm, it's a bit yucky colour. And it's like, yeah, I have to agree. <laughs> it's like a mustard. But it does get better and I think that darker colour to start with really does help and add value. And I think when you get to certain stages of the blending, which we do later, you are supposed to wait until your paint's dry. So therefore you're not creating colours um, or making it, I don't know, like a, a, a colour that you don't want. We'll just go with that one. Anyway, we're almost at the stage where we'll have done our blocking in. 
and then it starts to get a little bit more exciting where we start to uh, start to bring character to the sky a little bit just making sure I do my edges to um, save me some time later I'll, I'll sh save you some time watching me do it all but it's just to show you that I do do it I swear now I'm going to add a little bit of white to that mixture just to make it slightly lighter towards the edge just to remind me that I want that area to not be touching the water now I do go back and pull back some of the sand area into the ocean when we scuff them together uh, but that's going to be at a different stage we're going to talk about that all right we are going to get ready to do the cloud area a little bit more detail so it's going to be time to wash out your brush Maybe I have a cup of tea uh, and let's get ready for the next stage. So I have changed my brush. I've gone for a small filbert one. It's one that I just feel I can control it well enough if, um, um, because it's such a small canvas, it's not as liberating as a big canvas. So choose a brush that you feel you can put a little bit of control in there. I am just coming in and make, mixing up, not making, mixing up some purple and white and trying to get a soft pastel purple uh, for some of my clouds. And we're going to make sure that when I apply it on there, although there seems to be a lot of paint on my brush, by the time I've wiped it all off, I want it not to be too thick. And I'm just going to paint the purple haze from where the skyline is and then just randomly do some different strokes. I'm hoping that my canvas is going to pick up some of that paint and I start to scuff it in. And when I say scuff, it means that there's very little paint on the brush. It's not loaded and um, you're going to keep using your brush even though it feels like there's not a lot of paint on there because a little bit of that purple will come out and it'll become very soft and it'll blend in and so I'm starting to think about my purple haze at the bottom area where the um, the horizon line is and also where I want the composition of the clouds to come in now I wanted to keep a tiny little bit of that lovely peachy uh, pinky color in that corner just to help with that depth and perspective and that's why I painted that section in first i knew it was going to be behind some of these clouds but i wanted to make sure that um i just kept it in there anyway we're adding a little bit more purple to that color and i'm trying to add a little bit more character because i don't want it to be stormy or anything like that but i do want it to be a tropical cloudy night i don't know if i'm explaining myself very well i just wanted a little bit more depth there and i'm just going to keep doing that dance until i'm happy and uh, I've added a little bit more white there to that colour and trying to make it look like there's a, a fairly big cloud there but slightly lighter. And you can paint your clouds however you want. They're never going to be the same as mine because it's just going to be... Uh, I, I could never get it exactly the same of this because I'm just letting my canvas and my paintbrush go free using fairly loose brush strokes. The canvas is going to grab that colour and uh, you're going to get those beautiful clouds. So I'm adding in slightly more of the blue now because I'm going to phase the left side of my canvas to be more darker, more theatrical <laughs> than towards the right side. So again, I start with the deeper colours to start with and I do build it up to be slightly lighter uh, and you'll start to see a little bit more uh, white in there. I've kept some of that purple tones in there because I want it to... Um, represent the same sky uh, as the other side but have two defined sort of areas that come together i don't think i'm explaining myself very well i think my lingo bingo needs to uh, be in play for this i think i've heard myself say a lot of so's and everything like that so i do apologize i will try and perfect that anyway at this point i'm just going for dramaticness but also softness and again, at this stage, I just want to get the illusion or enough information onto this canvas that your brain fills in and can see those clouds there. And I'm just going to keep doing this dance for a little bit and then we'll leave it to dry and we'll start then to move into the ocean. Uh, and then we'll keep going backwards and forwards. But I think what I might do is put a bit of Sharon's Dodgy FM on. You can see what I'm doing uh, when I'm mixing it and what I'm trying to achieve in there. I'd say less is more. Be restrained. Uh, try and keep some of those tones behind popping through because that's going to help with the depth of your clouds but I'm just loving creating clouds at the moment
how relaxing was that music now I'm starting to build in my horizon. We do come back and revisit it multiple times. I used the neat blue on the left and the neat purple on the right, paying attention to my edges. I concentrate towards the sides and make it slightly thicker and come down a little bit. And I hardly touch the middle area. And that's to help give enough information to your brain that this is horizon, it's far away. And as we live in this beautiful planet that is round and not flat, it sort of helps along with that uh, thought process. We will go back and add a few more clouds into the, into the sky now using slightly more uh, deeper colours, but trying to make it very small and concise for that horizon area, again, to help with that illusion of distance. And then we're going to come on to stage two very soon. So I left the bit in there purposely to show you that sometimes in our composition, once we start to put it on, because I was just going from intuition, it didn't feel right. So I could pull it back to how I did it. And, and that's why I wanted to show you that it's OK to experiment and it's OK to get it wrong. And there are ways that you can pull it back and then you start all over, which is what I'm doing here. Now, it is amazing what you can do to trick the mind with a suggestion of where there's going to be waves. Now, for me, it's just been a matter of adding a little bit of the deeper blue colour or whatever you want to suggest where that wave is rolling up. And at this stage, we're going to keep them fairly loose. I just want to understand where they are going to be. And it's just about having fun and you will evolve it, you will pull it back, you will add it, you will tweak it. And this is the dance that we do. 
But the rule of thumb for me when I'm uh, giving that suggestion of a wave is I add a dark area where the wave is rolling up because that's where the force of the water is uh, to churn it up and around. So you would normally get that slightly lighter area towards the top. But because I'm not trying to do realism and very detail, I want my strokes to be fairly loose and for your brain just to fill in what that will be. So you see me explore a little bit. I add my dark area. I then try and pull it back and add a little bit of the lighter on top but hoping it's slightly different to what's on the ocean bed behind you. Now, it doesn't have to all be symmetrical or anything like that because there's movement in there, there's different depths in there, but it's just really to help me understand where this is going to be and we'll keep going backwards and forwards and until we get it right. But there's also perspective as well. If I want to keep the illusion of the distance and that these are towards the fore foreshore, they should slow slowly get bigger now i just wanted these to be slightly off center it's a personal choice it's up to you now i'm going to scuff here so what you saw me there was take off my excess paint off my brush and it still felt like there was a little bit too much there and it was a little bit darker so in my head i'm thinking okay this is nearer the shoreline therefore the water is um, thinner Therefore, it should be clearer and therefore you should be seeing a churning of the sand and the ocean. So I'm just going to pull back that darker colour there. Once I've got the excess paint off, what you're going to see me start to do is scuff into the sand area to give a suggestion that the water and the sand have met together and that there's a churning. You'll also see me go back and do the same with the sand area and pull that back into that area behind you. So at this stage, I'm just starting to understand, well, where is that water coming onto here? And then I'll start to put suggestions of um, where, it, where the waves on the front are going to be. And I think less is more at this stage. But we're moving on to step four now, which is adding a little bit of reflection. And why we're going back to the ocean now is because that area will have dried. We're now waiting for the sand area to dry. So at this stage, again, it's a suggestion of where we feel that you want your reflection to be in your ocean. And I start with the same colour that I had in the background before. And don't stress, if you get it wrong, you'll fight back like I did and you'll add your colour back. But we will slowly add little bits of these colours until it makes sense that you're happy with it. Uh, and I think that's the beauty of acrylics that I'm starting to enjoy, that you just work in sections while the other area is drying. And the less you have on your brush, the more it's just going to grab the canvas and help with that suggestion of where that um, sunset will be. So you're going to see me doing a little bit of playing with those colours that are in the sky until I'm happy with it. And uh, yeah, you will see it change uh, throughout this process, but where I place the colours roughly stay the same throughout it because I want the right side to be where there's more of that sunset and reflection and the left side to be more about the natural ocean that we will be seeing. But I have the dance until I get it right. So I'm going to put a little bit of um, Sharon's Dodgy FM on for you so you can watch the process again a little bit more and I'll add commentary as relevant. So you saw me tone down some of that ocean reflection 
by just adding a tiny little bit of water into your brush and scrubbing that into the um, existing colour and I also brought in a little bit of purple as well and scuffed that together as well and that toned it all down and blended it beautifully so we're on to our clouds now this is where you have to be cautious that you're not going to overwork it so I believe that I've added um, white directly to this and I will tone it through with some other colours there keeping my brush strokes loose and keeping the movement and trying to get some of those colours to come uh, around through should I say from behind and also um, scuffing it out into the other clouds so it's giving that softer edge and I'm doing that both to the left and right and I'm going to add some other colours through there just to keep blending it in and this is where I think you start to get a little bit more depth and um, we're trying to add character, be true to what is behind, not overwork it, leave space between the clouds and just have fun. No two clouds are the same. There is no prototype for a cloud. Make them something that you are happy with. And yeah, I just love, 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 uh, as I've said before, doing this. But little is more and just keep going back. If you do add white in itself, it's quite transparent, so it will dry where you can see some of those colors through. So just play on that. And I would say, stop, stand back, have a little look. If you're unsure if you like it, take a photo. Because when you see something through a different lens or different perspective, you'll be surprised at what you enjoy uh, or maybe what you want to tweak. And, and sometimes that's what I'd say, if you're getting frustrated, stop it leave it walk away come back tomorrow with fresh eyes and you might be surprised that it's actually not too bad uh, with this one i changed my brush up it's the uh, it's to allow me to have more control it's got an edge and it's got a slight point and i was trying to make sure i just focused just on the edge of those clouds i wanted them to be quite angelic and quite fluffy and that that's where maybe the sun or the light is impacting more than anything Anyway, uh, I hope that you can see what I'm doing just by the colours. We're just building on that first layer and yeah, we're just adding character. Okay, I'm going to leave you to a little bit of Sharon's Dodgy FM while we watch the next phase and hopefully finding time to relax and hopefully seeing it in real time. It's giving the opportunity to pause it uh, and for you to catch up if you are painting along. But any feedback on the video so far it is truly helpful for me because I want to keep adding value to everybody else. I want to keep sharing my art with you all. So any feedback that's constructive really helps me. All right. See you soon. See you soon. See you soon, I meant.
So what you just saw me do in the ocean area just then was what I had on my paintbrush was the final clouds at both sides, left and right, just very delicately got my brush to kiss the canvas. So it gives you almost like the sky reflecting on the ocean. So it was just very restrained at that time. Okay, where are we up to now, Sharon? Well, we are back to the sand area because that should have dried and we're now going to start scuffing our sand into our ocean and our ocean onto our sand and we're going to do a little bit of dance there and it's okay that the tones are slightly different uh, tones because that's going to help with that movement and I'm just going to go back and forth and until uh, I feel I'm happy and there's always a thought of how dark should it be if it's under the water or what would it look like if it's churning but try not to worry too much at this stage we're doing the first real big part of the scuffing and working on that foreground we are going to edit it out because you're going to see that there's sections i don't get right and that i keep working it until i'm happy what you'll see me do is very soon i'll come in with deeper areas and create lines or suggestions as to where I feel the water is rippling up onto the beach and um, I enjoy what it was to start with but I felt like it wasn't helping the piece so you will see me come back and edit sections of it but I've left it in to show you what I mean and at the minute I'm just trying to add different tones so I started dark and I'm slowly adding a little bit more white into it and I think that's going to give you that sense of a little bit of movement and maybe reflection I don't know but I promise you the process works for me uh, and just keep going backwards and forwards if you remove too much ocean you just let it dry and bring a bit more ocean in if you remove too much sand vice versa so um, it's win-win as long as it stays smooth at this stage I think that's key once I feel I've got the balance right you'll start me to you'll start to see me bring in those darker tones and basically to get it darker I just add more purple but I don't want it to be purple so if I get the color incorrect you'll see me add a little bit more yellow uh, a little bit more white until I feel I've got the tones right so this is where I'm putting the first suggestion of where I feel my first ocean wave rolling onto the beach will be I paint it in fairly loosely because I know that I'm going to be going over it with um, the white and everything like this but this and everything like this lingo bingo Sharon <laughs> what I mean is the dark is to create the shadow of where we will come back with the white. When we do come back with a white, we come back with an off-white that's slightly blue and that's to help cast a little bit of shadow and then we come back with a true white. So it's just to play on the mind. It's trying to trick your brain where you think in the shadow there, which helps with that 3D effect. This is where I come in and I have two waves lapping over each other and as we go on I get through that because it just didn't feel right with me and I think that's something that you have to accept it's okay for it not to be right and for you to edit it and uh, just have fun. Anyway that one's looking a little bit too purple so I do tone it down a little bit and add a little bit more of the yellow to it uh, but I think you're going to be able to see what it is that I'm doing and I think if you are unsure how to do it just practice get a tiny little canvas practice doing just some uh, generic beach uh, color and then practice doing your shadow and then practice putting those different colors over it and uh, you will you will uh, get better of it but the looser it is the more free your strokes are when it comes the time for the detail um, the more real it looks in my opinion so this wave that I'm building in now um, I end up stripping that one back uh, it was too close to the forefront uh, but I don't realize that until the end so well not quite the end until a little bit later so I just keep working on it for now uh, so you might want to watch my whole process through to see which ones I pull back on you might want to follow the process and uh, do what I'm doing so that you can learn. You might choose to leave that area in and it's okay because this is your painting. You want to put your own spin on it. So what I'm doing now is lightening up the sand area to help with perspective because in theory this part of the sand has not been touched by water. So that's going to help with that illusion or suggestion 
that there's depth and that the other area is wet and this is dry now I keep my brush strokes fairly loose and I keep blending it in with the other colors and I keep getting lighter and lighter and I scuff in when it's almost a dry brush just so it the canvas captures that paintbrush and it drags off area and the more uneven it is the more in my opinion it looks real but you might want flat smooth perfection and that is okay because it's your painting now we're going to be moving on to the next phase and the next step is adding depth to the clouds so we're back to the cloud area because that has now dried and we're going to be adding some more deeper purposeful clouds towards our shoreline shoreline horizon is what i meant <laughs> So I'm just going to play some music while you see that process. You can see the colours I'm working on and just thinking of depth, uh, restraint and yeah, keep standing back, checking I'm happy with it and yeah, love the end result. But I'll leave you to some of Shine's Dodgy FM. How beautiful is some of this free music on YouTube? I mean, thank you so much to the artists out there that are willing to put free stuff on there for us to help with our videos and emotions. And yeah, um, if you want to know what songs are playing, check in my description. It'll show you each and every uh, creator that I use in my videos. Anyway, back to the painting. I've added in my pink and what I call my peachy. Um, 
some reflections again and trying to mirror a little bit the colours that are above uh, and bringing it down and bringing some even into that shoreline it's all going to pay in the end uh, what we're doing we will tweak them a little bit but it's just sort of showing us what we're doing now this is a part that uh, is an optional extra but I think it adds a lot of value and it's the start of the suggestions of where the water has gone into the shoreline and receded back so you get a little bit of that uneven surface and I think with this the, f the first time round, I don't necessarily quite get it right and we come back later and you see me edit it now on the bigger canvases the first time round worked really well for me so I think it was just more because I was going to tweak the front a lot I ended up going over it so with such as this less is more think of the direction the water's travelling in and then scuff some of it back which is what you'll see me doing now just doing it to the left or right so it's not so precise because the water will ripple in many a direction and just pulling back some of that because if the water is uh, on its way in it's not going to come out that far is it so just playing with the tricks on mind I do come back over the lines again and paint them in but this is where I'm thinking okay it needs to come all the way to that um, the back wave that's rolling in uh, so just going left and right while it's slightly wet just to try and ease um, some of the harshness of it I'm coming back in now to paint in my shadow line just to make sure that um, that helps with the illusion. Now I do lose a lot of those lines but it's okay. The one or two that stay there really do add value and uh, you may not want to do it. It's all optional extras. I'm just sharing with you the full process that I did in this piece to yeah, de deliver the results. And as I say, I am not... Uh, the best artist on YouTube or anything like that I'm also not putting myself down what I'm trying to say is that I'm a human being like you I enjoy art and I love learning and and growing and art gave back to me at a time in my life where I really needed uh, some support with mental well-being and when I got into art it helped create a zen spot for me and it quietened my mind and then I've kept working at it and I keep improving and part of my reason for my YouTube channel is to share my love and passion for learning art and to helpfully encourage people to do it and it doesn't matter what the end result is what happen what matters is you find some peace you enjoy doing what you're doing and you see improvements with each piece of art you create and you can only get better by trying by learning by failing by getting on with it anyway i got on my high horse a little bit there but i am super passionate about it so what i am done here what i have done here is i've added blue to my white so it's the off white because no white foam in a wave is pure white you're going to see shadows in there and everything like that so by doing the darker white underneath when you add your true white and you go in the circular motion that I do you'll see some of the shadows coming through now the foam is something that does take a little bit of um when I say perfecting I think you can get the results first time as long as you're restrained and you'll see the process that I go through you'll see how I have to pull it back and I have to rebuild them as well but I'm repeating repeating the process on all the waves and I'm going to do the off white build it in with white and then I'm going to start blending in my ocean and my sand again and, and work on that till I'm happy and pull that wave back and we let this part dry and then we come back with our palette knife and we start to do a little bit of circle motion so I'm just going to see um, what happens in the next little bit of time and then what I am going to do in the meantime is put some Sharon's Dodgy FM on but I will talk through this part because this seems to be the part that I got asked more, more, more questions about on my last couple of pieces that I've done. So I will be back but until then enjoy watching and yeah hope you're relaxing.
So we're at the most important part, I think, when it comes to patience. So I'm now using white um, as a pure colour. And what I mean by that is there's nothing else added into that. But what's the important part is dabbing it on and dabbing it off. You want the tiniest little bit of paint on there and you want to do it in slow circular motions. You want the canvas to pull the paint onto it. So you're going to get little sprinklings everywhere. You're going to get little gaps in there and that's okay. Now you might not get everything where you want it to be, but you can come back and fix it off. But if you do it in that rolling motion, from my own personal opinion, it gets you the feeling that that ocean is churning into you and there's movement in there. So why it's important with patience is if you slap it on, you're going to get globs of it. It's going to be solid white and it's just going to look like it's been slapped on there. Whereas if you put a little bit on and build it up over time, although it is intricate and there's a temp temptation to want to just get it over with quickly, this is the important part to make it all come together in my opinion. Now you can see when I do this process, there's parts where it does just slap on there for me and I come back and I edit it out. And when you start to do this, you start to understand what do you enjoy, what do you don't, what are you gonna edit out? But this is the first stage um, of creating that movement in the ocean. So you will observe me doing this, circling round, working on the other um, waves, editing it back out. I go back over it a couple of times if it goes uh, too much into the areas I don't want it. Um, so there's a restraint thing. You don't want it to go all the way back, but you want it to look like there's power in the force at the front. You want to leave enough shadow showing that it gives you that illusion of 3D. Um, so I'm going to play some music now, but little but often, go on to your next wave, come back, let it dry, and then add more until you get the balance and keep stepping back. Keep seeing what you're happy about. Now, because it's coming onto the ocean, it doesn't matter that you get little bits here, there and everywhere because that just adds to the illusion of uh, the force of the water uh, and, and that splash, splashy movement. Anyway, I'll put some more music on and I'll come back if I feel you need more commentary for this stage.
So on this stage here where I talk about connecting the ocean, this is where I'm working on my composition. So I didn't like that third piece, which I told you about earlier. So I have just brought the ocean further forward and I'm now gradiating roughly with rough brush, brush strokes, slightly lighter shades, um, just to create that sense of movement. Some of the colours that we put before, like the sand and the reflection and the white, they will still show through there. So you've not lost everything. But I felt for myself to make this composition make sense. That's what I wanted to do. As it gets nearer the white area, the foam area, you'll see me add a little bit more white. I'll come back in and I'll add a little bit more sand. And then we're going to start to work on the little detailed area. Now, you might think, Sharon, why are you going to cover some of that foam? I mentioned before that when you're going in that round motion, some of that white could come off in areas that maybe it's a bit too big. And I wanted to flatten some of the movement. So you'll see me come back in and repeat the process with... Um, high like low lighting that's the word underneath here and um start to blank out some of the areas that were the white landed that maybe i'm not happy about so i'm going to play around in this area now between wave one and wave two mix up a little bit more of the sand area and bring back some of that foam there will still be some showing through and we do add some more later but i needed to do this to make it all make sense or make sense to myself so you see me come back in and add a little bit of the shaded area you'll see me darken off some of that sand area again and then we're just going to have a little bit of a play around in that area here and start to hopefully make that front area look more like it is within the end so again i'm working with light and dark shades of sand i'll let it dry i'll come back in with some of the blues and i'll do my scuffling where it's or scuffing where it's a almost dry brush brush to fade in some of the ocean with the sand and some of the effects that I do when I've got the white on this palette knife when I scrape it to the left or back that's just to look um, or add a little bit of interest maybe look like there's a little bit of foam there maybe look like the reflections um, in the clouds uh, just to add detail in that close-up area anyway I think I've talked through enough at the minute. I think you're going to understand what I'm doing there. It's really just a focused area, just trying to make it so that I'm happy with it. Pull back on the areas that don't work and then re-go over them. Uh, and, and, and I think that's one of the things you, you just have to be prepared to do, which is the dance with your acrylic until you get the piece that you desire and that you're happy about. All right, Sharon's Dodgy FM, coming back on.
So as with the foam at the front, it's white with a little bit of blue in there to try and create a little bit of shadow when we put some foam underneath it. Now the back two waves, I don't really add much foam on there at all because I don't want they, those to be a feature. I just want there to be enough information uh, to make a suggestion to your brain. The um, one, um, the third, <laughs> yeah, the third one, it's third one in the... <laughs> the one in the middle there's the one in the middle from the front and the back anyway that one I'm going to add more detailing so this one takes a little bit of practice so don't feel bad if you don't get it right to start with uh, you basically rotate your brush around and let it just kiss the canvas and let it drag it off and you want it to be in no particular pattern now I get excited by this part and this is where you can overwork it so normally I do three different shades in here I'll do uh, more of a bluey one then it will be added more white until the 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 last one is almost white and that gives you that sense of reflection or movement or there'll be different heights of the ocean the idea being you want it to be random and not to overwork it now I got carried away and I did a lot which I enjoyed but I felt like I'd overworked it so I wanted to calm down the left side so all you're seeing is very randomly going in there if you add a little bit of water onto your brush it's going to come off and flow quite nicely but um it it took me a couple of times to understand what I meant about not overworking it and being totally random. On the bigger canvases, I hold my brush to one side a little bit and then just rotate it round um, in my fingers so it's constantly moving and that helped me with the control. I'm just adding a little bit more feature at that sand area uh, just to bring down, to make it look like there's a bit of water and movement so i pull it down a little bit and then i brush it side to side that helps with that illusion of reflection from the sky but it also pays back later when you go and add some of the white foam on top of it here but you can make it however you want this is your piece i'm sure yours is going to look slightly different to mine put your own personality on it just keep stepping back and looking at when's enough enough because even though mine's meant to be really random when you look at it you can see there's still a certain pattern that I do <laughs> uh, and that's what you want to try and avoid uh, where possible but yeah if you mess it up just come back in paint over with your ocean and then add some more of that sand in there and then just keep working it until you're happy with it and that's what you're seeing me do on this part here I'll come through with a palette knife as well and just slightly go over it and add a little bit of foam on top of it uh, but most of the attention now is going to be on those waves I do come back towards the end after I initial my piece and add some more um, I think excitement into the ocean a little bit more vibrancy now you can add some squiggles at the front here now I didn't want to do too much for this part because I wanted it to look like I wanted it to be as clear as possible with just a few suggestions there so that you're you can imagine that there is water there anyway I hope I'm articulating myself I hope you're enjoying hearing me speak out some of the reasons behind it I know that I'm trying to balance this one so that you can still see it in real time and you can still watch or you can listen to what I'm doing and why. If you're proficient in paint, you might just look at certain things that I do and move forward and that's okay. But for people that are just trying to get that little sense of encouragement to pick up those brushes, I hope that this is helping. Now this is where I'm adding my white paint and going over some of the pieces that are already there. They don't have to be totally separate, you can cross over and that adds to that uh, magic and that movement as well. Um, I'll let you enjoy watching this process and I'll speak again if I feel that it's going to add value but other than that thank you so much for choosing to spend some time with me if you've watched the whole of this video you are amazing and it means the world to me if you're just coming in and can only watch a little bit I still appreciate that as well anyway I'll see you soon and it's ooh, just over three and a half weeks until Vegas baby getting exciting
So you saw me there playing with the front area and pulling back and what I'm doing now is kind of glazing. So I've got the blue on my paintbrush where I've gone over it to reduce some of the um, detail just to calm it down a little bit and it's such a diluted blue it's almost like a glaze but it's quite nice because it helps with that suggestion that the water's there and there's a reflection but it just brushes over beautifully like, like a glaze <laughs> and that's what I did in that front area and it's what I did in the water area behind so I do come back and work on these again when I think that it's done it's mainly because I lose a lot of the shadow and I don't realize until the next day that it bugs me still so I come and fix it up but I think it's just this is the part which is the hard part it's the balance when you're going to be adding your detail knowing when is enough detail to pull back so we are about to go in and do the final bits of highlights when it comes to our ocean so our clouds those beautiful clouds coming back into that ocean and we're just going to start to brighten it up and and this is the lovely part because you know you're on the home stretch and um just make it fun just think about perspective as far as where it is but at the end of the day it's your fantasy world you can make what it is so i just go back over and start to bring some back into that front area which i reworked uh, after i last did it and it's just again knowing when is there enough suggestion like i think it adds some beautiful warmth to that sand area and um i don't think i overcommit on this I think I end up with it uh, in a place where I was really happy uh, and so the last thing to do on this video really is going to be you're going to see me blending in some of the highlights in all the colours I've used before and just trying to get the balance right diluting it with water a little bit to blend it in you'll see me then come and add texture to my water which is really just scuffing in different shades of blue uh, and trying to bring down a little bit of reflection from the cloud area so just starting to work on that horizon again a little bit just to make sure that it's as I want it to be and then I sign in the bottom left corner and then that's when I wake up the next day and think no um, I want a little bit more dramatic um, shadow underneath the way so you see me come in please don't um worry i come in and pay a little bit of shadow underneath those uh, first two waves again and then i add a little bit more white and i think it just adds to that 3d effect anyway at this stage it's little it's often but it's just that fine detail and you're more or less going over stuff that you've already done before but just making it more prominent or or re-going over it where it's probably had other colors going over it or just adding that fine detail just to get that composition right and and to make it pop but all the other theories that i've talked about or gone through are exactly the same at this stage your painting's done and you can stop at any time I'm just tweaking it until I'm happy and I really hope that you understand what it is that I'm doing when you see me painting and maybe you could you think well I'd have stopped there and, and that's okay you stop there that's your painting but I hope that this video and this breakdown and, and seeing everything in real time is helping you so don't forget to drop me a comment if you find it useful let me know and as always thank you so much for your support but if you haven't already please consider it consider giving me that thumbs up and consider subscribe subscribing <laughs> if you haven't already anyway i think this is really going to be it with commentary i think you can visually see all the things i'm doing i'm just doing the beautiful dance working backwards and forwards using all the colors that i've used before and just trying to uh, bring it all together anyway it's been amazing to be able to share this with you and i can't wait to share more in future videos. I'll speak to you later. Bye bye.